Joining me now, former governor and Republican presidential candidate John Kasich, former Democratic Congresswoman Donna Edwards, and Politico White House correspondent Eugene Daniels. So, Governor, Gov uh, Governor DeSantis is trying to out-Trump Trump on the culture wars. Uh, we should point out that in this diversity and exclusion bill that he signed, it does not uh, interfere with any federal mandates on these colleges. It's just uh, things that are discretionary to the states. So, in any case, uh, well, I mean, it, it Andrew, does. If he thinks there's going to be it, mini, yeah, yeah. That's, come on, it'd be Go a ahead. mini Trump. I mean, it, look, he did very well in getting reelected in Florida. And for some reason, he's pivoted into these cultural wars, thinking that by doing this, that somehow he's going to take stuff from Trump. The problem is, in the, in the process of that, he's also losing people who would be look for, you know, a more normal, uh, centrist-based person. You know, the, the, the CEO of, uh, of Citadel, who was a big DeSantis guy, he's kind of backing off now. So to me, his successful strategy should be to tell them all the things that he did. In Florida, how he managed the the hurricane, which was a you know a gold star for him. But instead, he's getting into these culture wars. I I just don't think that's the strategy or the path that he needs to take. In terms of Mike Pence, you know, with Mike Pence, that's a question of he gets all the baggage of having worked with Trump, but he doesn't get any of the good stuff. So he's got a long road ahead. And Eugene, the governor yesterday also signed that bill on diversity and inclusion programs at public colleges, including race and sexual identity. And we should note again, the bill does not prohibit programs required by federal law. Let's watch some of his comments and get your reaction on the other side. DEI is, is better um, viewed as standing for discrimination, exclusion, and indoctrination. Some of these niche subjects like critical race theory, other types of DEI-infused uh, courses and majors, um, Florida's getting out of that game. Um, if you want to do things like uh, gender ideology, uh, go to Berkeley, go to some of these other places. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, the Berkeley reference seems to be going back to the 60s, I think. Uh, Eugene, is this a play for the evangelical vote by DeSantis? Could it backfire? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it could, it could both. Yes and, right? Um, one, this is him um, doing something that Republicans have been doing for quite some time, is trying to use the fear of the other to gin up um, what has been seen as the Trump base. So that's one thing. But also, um, like you said, the evangelical base, making sure that those folks feel like um, he is protecting their way of life, talking about whether or not he is protecting um, that, that they feel um, the other is coming and encroaching on their space. All those things aren't always true, but that is what the play is here. And I think it could backfire. Like Governor Kasich said, it is possible that there is a lane for someone outside of Donald Trump. But if you just do Trump light, why would voters who've already seen what Trump says and does and don't seem to be running from him in the Republican primary, um, seem to be running further to him, why would they go with Trump light when they can have Donald Trump? But this is something all of these candidates are going to have to deal with. You know, you had Mike Pence a couple of months ago at the gridiron dinner behind closed doors saying things about Donald Trump that he wouldn't has not said in public. You have DeSantis in Iowa um, kind of talking about the culture of losing that Republicans have been dealing with for, for years now and not saying Donald Trump's name. And so they're trying to thread a needle that at this point, and I think Governor Kasich knows very well, doesn't has not worked for Republican candidates who face off against Donald Trump in primaries. And on a big issue Democrats believe will be abortion, uh, at least in the general election, Governor DeSantis took a swipe at Donald Trump today over the former president's refusal to back Florida's six-week ban. And I should point out, in North Carolina this afternoon, we're expecting that the legislature is going to override Governor Roy Cooper's veto. He vetoed the 12-week ban on Saturday. And it is expected to be overridden by the Republican legislature, according to Michelle Sindor, our colleague covering that. Um, the governor was on Morning Joe earlier, pleading with Republicans. Have the courage to stand up to the Republican leadership. Uh, they only have a one-vote supermajority in the House and a one-vote supermajority in the Senate. And all we need is one Republican to stand up mm -hmm. in either chamber to stop this bad ban in North Carolina. And, Donna, when you look at the numbers here, the majority of Americans are opposed to blanket abortion bans. Um, so is this going to backfire against 
the Republican nominee if their position is for something that is almost a ban in some in many of these states? Well, it's going to do as it has done, which is to continue to backfire against Republicans. I don't understand this at all. I mean, Republican uh, candidates are not creating a lane for themselves that is designed both in a primary election and general election to appeal even to uh, to independents. Um, the issue of abortion, along with these culture wars, is against where the majority of the country are. I mean, you look whether it's in Florida or North Carolina or across the country, um, people support uh, abortion rights. And so I just am not really sure uh, whether this even creates space within the Republican Party uh, for people who are running to the far uh, right on these issues. It seems to me that Democrats are probably salivating at the idea of going into a general election uh, on the issue of abortion rights, on, uh, on these culture wars and book bans, um, and things that republic where Republicans are far afield from where the general public is. So I don't really see what the end game is here, but uh, let the Republicans fight it out among themselves all the way to the right, and they will have no ability to appeal uh, to independent voters in a general election. Uh, Governor Kasich, just uh, play devil's advocate here, because uh, we've heard White House officials privately saying, in reaction to Donald Trump's town hall meeting last last week, that, that the abortion issue is the thing that really struck them most, and they really are looking forward to a general election against Donald Trump. Is this a case of be careful what you wish for, that he showed himself to be an energetic candidate and able to say whatever he wanted to say and wrote <laughs> over, well, you know, you know, the, you know. the fact-checking? Yeah, you know, what's interesting, Andrea, I was sort of shocked at reading that some of the Biden advisors are saying that they don't want him to debate uh, Donald Trump in the fall, if Trump should be the nominee, because they're afraid that, uh, you know, I mean, Trump is skillful. Uh, he comes at you big, you know, those kinds of things, those kinds of things. And contrast is something that I think is concerning uh, the Biden people. At least that's what some things have leaked out. So, look, I mean, Biden is not in good shape. I mean, his approval rating is not good. There's going to be a real focus on whether uh, you know, you're voting for uh, Biden or you're voting for Harris. I mean, these the Democrats have their problems. Uh, I just think that for the Republicans, you know, it always gets down to the economics. It gets down to how do you feel about your security, economic security, personal safety, all those kind of things. And, um, you know, that's that's where they ought to be. But I, I think Biden is, is vulnerable. I think he will beat Trump. But I've got to tell you, this is... Uh, I know there are a lot of Democrat operatives that are very, very concerned. John Kasich, Don Edwards, and uh, Eugene Daniels. Thanks to all of you.